Hi, I'm Nafisa Latic and this is Across the Balkans. This week we begin in Bosnia, where a disputed election law is brewing fears of renewed tensions. The latest political crisis centers on claims that High Representative Christian Schmidt will impose an amendment to the election law for the entity of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina without the consent of politicians. Protesters and analysts warn these changes would give the Croat Nationalist Party HDZ and Nationalist Secessionist Serb SNSD Party a disproportionate degree of political influence and further deepen ethnic divisions. Following days of demonstrations, Schmidt announced he will give the parties more time to agree on the changes. We'll discuss this in a moment, but first, let's take a closer look at what these changes are. But it seems the back and forth negotiations will likely continue despite the demonstrations. Thousands of protesters gathered in Sarajevo following local media reports that High Representative Christian Schmidt is consulting other international representatives in the country to impose changes to Bosnia and Herzegovina's election law. And many political parties join the call. They say Schmidt's plan will give disproportionate influence to Croat and Serb nationalists. The main message? Solutions based on ethnic discrimination, which go against all democratic and legal standards, are completely unacceptable. The changes aim to alter how delegates of the Upper House of Parliament are elected. According to the current election law, delegates are voted on a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one basis, which means that there is one Bosniak, one Serb, and one Croat from every canton in the Federation. But according to the new proposal, if any of these constituent nations have less than 3% in a canton, they will not have any representation in parliament. The Bosniak parties describe the proposal as discriminatory and that it will benefit the main Bosniak Croat party, the HDZ. And during his recent visit to Mostar, Croatian Prime Minister Andrej Plenković supported the changes and said the new law would take into account all the constituent peoples of Bosnia. After several days of protests, Schmidt announced his decision to amend the election law only on a technical basis. On Wednesday, he gathered the heads of the major Bosnian political parties and gave them six weeks to solve this so-called 3% issue amongst themselves before he imposes the change under his special powers. I order today a transparency package that helps guarantee a fair election and fair um, campaign uh, that this is implemented. Unfortunately, everybody failed. The High Representative in Bosnia has the mandate to unilaterally dismiss elected officials all the way up to the President, implement or no laws, and even change the country's national symbols. And he has the strong support of UK and US representatives in the country. So if the parties fail once more to agree on the changes, he might end up going ahead with his plan and this could seriously spark another crisis in the country and even put elections in October in jeopardy. Let's bring in a Bosnian analyst who is also strongly against the changes Schmidt wants to impose. Samir Beharic joins us from Leipzig, Germany. He's a research officer at the Balkan Forum and focuses on human rights. Thank you for being with us, Samir. Now, uh, what is that you find discriminatory in the changes that uh, Schmidt wants to impose? Well, first and foremost, the, the, the leaked draft law um, was supposed to bring together people of Bosnia and to solve some of the problems of discrimination, discriminatory problems when it comes to um, Bosnians being elected to office. However, what this particular law does is basically entrench, entrenches segregation 
and divide people even more along their um, ethnic lines, prioritizing uh, people of specific, not only specific ethnicity within Bosnia and Herzegovina, but focusing and giving priority to um, Croats from specific political party from HDZ and their satellite affiliates, um, and allowing them and their voters um, to cast their ballots with a, a stronger, stronger, so to, so to speak, value when it comes to votes, rather than the Croats um, in some other parts. Uh, parts of the country. But and why that's then, why, why does, if, uh, as you say, these changes would divide people more and uh, you find discriminatory uh, these changes, why is then Schmidt imposing this anyway? I mean, for, this was this was a big um, enigma to all of us. Not only why he is imposing them, but also on the moment when he is when he is trying to impose them. Not even three months away um, from the upcoming op October elections. Um, what we know so far is that um, Croatian foreign policy, foreign ministry played a crucial role in lobbying um, Mr. Schmidt. Um, however, there is no official information coming from Mr. Schmidt who says that he wanted to. Um, give um, in, in a solution in good faith. However, it backfired um, badly with having thousands of people going to the streets um, and, and opposing something that is, you know, bringing further even more division that we so have So what had happens now? What happens now? Schmidt says he will give more parties, more time to parties to agree themselves on the changes. Do you think they will find a solution and well, agree? I mean, they haven't agreed until now. So um, I really don't think they will agree in the middle of political campaign. He gave them some six weeks. Um, and he said if they do not agree, he will, you know, come back, he will bring them back. And then what? Will he impose the the the, the law, you know, in the middle of um, the political electoral campaign for October elections? I really don't think so. The solution here would be, you know, to bring the leaders together after the elections and after the elections, you know, to find a common ground, common solution for um, that works for all, not only for Hadizé. The Croatian government and Prime Minister Plenković, uh, they say they are very concerned about discrimination in Bosnia. Why do you think Croats uh, in Bosnia feel discriminated and they do have support in this thinking coming from Zagreb? Well, I mean, we are discriminated as well, but we are discriminated against about the fact that people who consider themselves Roma, Bosnians, Jews, uh, you know, cannot have representation, cannot run for office. So basically, if you're a Bosnian in Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, you cannot run for office. And um, I am sorry that, 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 you know, Croatian foreign policy is directly meddling into Bosnian internal affairs, but we should first implement the verdicts of the European Court of Human Rights before we start implementing any other court decisions within, within Bosnia and Herzegovina. This particular law would bring even more discrimination, even more segregation. I saw one of your tweets, Samir, where you ask uh, Christian Schmidt to speak to young people more than to politicians. Why you want that from him to do that? Well, he is he has met more Bosnians on the plane in the air than on the ground. Just like many of his EU colleagues, EU diplomats, those people that he is talking to in Bosnia are nationalist politicians. He need to go outside of Sarajevo, talk to people, to young people in Yaice, you know, in Mostar, in Trebinje, in Livno, depopulated areas, and find out from them why people are not happy, why people why people are leaving, and what are some of the biggest problems that they are having. The problem that Dragan Trovic and, and national nationalist Croats. Um, have in Bosnia and Herzegovina are not the problems of the people. Those are the problems of Dragan Trovic. And exactly therefore, Christian Schmidt should go out and talk to people, Bosnian people on the ground, instead of only in the air while he's coming back, you know, from Germany back to Bosnia and talking to those who left the country and who are visiting only for summer holidays. Samir, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, your insight. Samir Beharic, there for us. Thank you for having me. Let's take a look at another story that's making headlines in the region. NATO forces in Kosovo have announced they are ready to intervene if stability in the country's north is threatened.
Tensions between Pristina and Belgrade are running high as air raid sirens were heard for more than three hours in the small border town of Mitrovica. Kosovo has accused neighboring Serbia of trying to destabilize the country as ethnic Serbs blocked roads in the north in an ongoing dispute over license plates and identity cards. Officials in Kosovo had earlier decided to resume the practice of requiring vehicles entering from Serbia to replace their number plates with local ones. Serbia has the reverse requirement for vehicles entering from Kosovo. But after discussions with European and U.S. partners, Kosovo postponed the plan until the 1st of September. The illegal structures of Serbia have become criminal gangs more aggressive. I request from Kosovar media that the announcements coming from the Belgrade and Moscow media not be disseminated as news and facts in an uncritical manner because they are coming from authoritarian states without freedom of the press. All I can say is we will ask for peace and seek peace. But let me tell you right away, there will be no surrender and Serbia will win. If they would dare to persecute Serbs, mistreat Serbs, kill Serbs, Serbia will win. That's all I have to say. We'll continue to follow developments coming out of Kosovo. But let's turn to Croatia now, where the EU's latest mega project is already having an impact just one week since opening. The Pelješac bridge has cut traffic at the Bosnia-Croatia border by 50%. The bridge, co-funded by the European Union, crosses over the Croatian mainland to the Pelješac Peninsula, providing easier access to the popular tourist spot Dubrovnik. Croatia's Prime Minister says the $531 million bridge is not a luxury, but a necessity. But not everyone is happy, including Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is worried that the structure blocks its only access to the sea. Veljko Skenderija has more. After more than two decades of planning and promises by politicians, Croatia has finally built the Perišac Bridge. A bridge that has been generations in the making. The bridge now bypasses the Bosnian Herzegovinian town of Neum to link Croatia with its far south. Croatia is set to complete its European integration when it enters the Schengen zone and adopts the euro early next year. Foreign policy goals are now more or less achieved, but the biggest challenge still awaits – to create better living conditions for the citizens of Croatia. And the bridge is just one piece of the puzzle. Budimo sretni da će oni koji će koristiti ovaj most dati svoj doprinos ekonomskom razvoju Hrvatske, boljoj prometnoj povezanosti, boljim prihodima od turizma, a iznad svega kvalitetnijem životu svih ljudi koji žive u južnom dijelu Dubrovačko-Neretvanske županije. And the Prime Minister is not the only one convinced that there will be an economic renaissance in the South. Here in Briesta, the entry point on the side of the Pelješac Peninsula, residents call the bridge the biggest event of their lives. They expect it to have a direct impact on a place that was once forgotten and which has only about 50 inhabitants. Prije mosta kuće su se zatvarale, obitelji su odlazile, nestajala su mjesta i sad, sad kažem da li će se mjesto proširivati, povećavati, kako, šta će se događati, ali u svakom slučaju mislim da će, da je sama budućnost puno svjetlija nego što je izgledalo prije. The Pelješac bridge really looks imposing. It is one of the largest structures of its kind built in Europe during this century. And not only that, it is the most expensive infrastructure project since the EU started co-financing them in 1986. The bridge cost around $430 million, 85% of which came from Brussels. But as is usually the case in Croatia, its construction was not without controversy. 
plans for the bridge were drawn up in the year 2000, but construction was sporadic, and the bridge itself became a political lightning rod. Only after joining the EU in 2013 did Croatia manage to map out the financing, but another problem arose when it chose a Chinese company as the contractor. Details of how the deal was reached with the China Road and Bridge Corporation was never made public. European firms have complained to Brussels about what they called unfair practices by the Chinese company like underbidding and price dumping. It was also the first case of EU funds being funneled to a Chinese company. And all of that, along with the claims that Chinese builders worked in semi-slave conditions, allegedly prompted the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, to skip the bridge's opening. And there is also the problem with Bosnia and Herzegovina. Pelički most podignut je u interesu Hrvatske i njenih ljudi, ali nikome i nikad u inat. Nikome na štetu, naročito ne u inat Bosni i Hercegovini ili na štetu Bosne i Hercegovine. Tako bismo razmišljali sve da Bosna i Hercegovina i nije domovina i hrvatskog naroda. Officials from Sarajevo vehemently opposed the construction. The Bosnian leadership did everything to stop the works, saying that ships would not be able to pass under the bridge on the way to Neum. So the height of the bridge was raised to 55 meters. But for people in Neum, that hasn't done much to cast away the doubts. And in Neum, opinions are divided as to whether the Pelješac bridge will make life and tourism more difficult in Bosnia's only gateway to the Adriatic Sea. While some believe that the fast road connecting Neum with the interior of Bosnia, just finished recently, will have a much greater and positive impact, others, especially those who operate businesses directly on the Adriatic tourist road, fear that things could change for the worse. The fact that the number of cars entering Neum halved just a day after the bridge's opening shows that the fear is not unfounded. Up to 300 people here make a living of transit guests who travel to Dubrovnik and further east. One of those affected is Tomislav, whose hotel is right on the main road. Tomo, on the other hand, believes the bridge is a problem only for businesses on the main road. He says, at the moment, his rooms are at a full capacity. The local government projects that the drop in traffic may be anywhere between 20 to 50 percent. And as far as the mayor is concerned, that is hardly a problem. Naš neka plan razvoja održavog turizma, otvaranja zaleđa i svi ti plano najdu nam nekako u tome da bi most kao most takav mogao donijeti taj pozitivan učinak smanjenja ovoga tranzita. But right now Croatia's focus is entirely on itself. The nearly two and a half kilometer megastructure whose steel alone weighs roughly 30 Eiffel Towers, is the pride and joy for the country. But the bridge is also a symbol of European solidarity and the benefits of EU membership, because without funds from Brussels, it would probably never exist. Veljko Skanderija, TRT World, Pelješac, Croatia.
Let's get some analysis now. I'm joined by Davor Genero. He's a political analyst and he joins us from Kirk Island uh, in Croatia. Mr. Genero, great to have you with us on Across the Balkans. Now, uh, first of all, is this bridge really a game changer? Uh, in a way, yes, but it, it is very controversial uh, from the uh, from the beginning of that project. There was a good solution uh, before Croatia entering uh, European Un Union made by late President uh, uh, Izetbegovic and late. Uh, uh, President uh, uh, Tujman, which make arrangement uh, uh, called uh, 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 called uh, called Neum uh, Ploče, which uh, had guaranteed uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina enter uh, to open sea and Croatia connection between uh, Dubrovnik and the rest of the uh, rest of uh, the country. The problem was that. Uh, uh, both governments have had obstructed that uh, uh, agreement made in 1999, and when Croatia had entered the European Union, uh, it became uh, impossible uh, to uh, implement uh, that solution. So, in that moment, uh, uh, building the bridge uh, was the only one solution for co connecting uh, Croatia. And on other way, uh, with uh, uh, building that bridge, uh, the wrong message from European Union has been sent uh, to uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the wrong message is that Bosnia uh, and Herzegovina for the a long term period won't be uh, the member of EU. Yeah. Part of the European Union. So practically, Croatia and the EU both ignored yeah. Bosnia's complaints. Uh, Bosnian uh, complaints uh, were not ignored. Uh, the bridge is designed on a way that uh, it guarantees uh, contact uh, uh, for uh, the rather big ships uh, with, uh, 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 with uh, Bosnian uh, Sea. Uh, there, uh, there is no possibility uh, for entering uh, larger uh, larger uh, ships uh, in uh, Neum Bay than uh, uh, the bridge allows that that bridge is high uh, somewhere as uh, the bridge uh, in uh, uh, over the Bosphor so th this is not uh, not the real problem the pro problem was political one uh, and the wrong message from Croatian side was the fact that uh, there was made uh, arrangement with the wrong person, Mr. Dodik, uh, in implementing uh, the project. Uh, so where does this leave relations uh, Dodik between... Is the so last person... Yeah, so where does this leave relations between Sarajevo and Zagreb? We have seen so many frictions uh, recently, even uh, around the election law in Bosnia. So where does this leave two countries? Uh, I'm afraid that uh, we are in uh, uh, unpleasant uh, position. Uh, I'm one uh, who is always uh, advocating uh, the strong uh, 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 partnership with, between Croatia and Bosnia, and especially between Croats and Bosnia, uh, Bosniaks, both in, uh, uh, in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, on uh, international level. Level. Now we are in uh, uh, dead end road. I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid that there is no sign of uh, uh, solving a lot of uh, basically not important problems, but uh, by the wrong attitude of politicians, those problems. Uh, became uh, rather huge. And just briefly, at the, end, at the end, Croatia's president, Zora Milanovic, said that for China, uh, that built this bridge, uh, this bridge was in some way an entrance to EU territory, uh, but uh, this territory still remained closed for them. What do you make of his remarks? Uh, uh, 
uh, he is the person who is advocating uh, Russian and Chinese in, uh, interest in Croatia. Uh, he is uh, uh, ra uh, he is very problematic uh, politician, and this is not uh, uh, the position of uh, dominant uh, 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 political uh, strains in uh, Croatia. Uh, the, the fact that a, a Chinese uh, company had built it, the bridge uh, uh, was possible because. It was uh, before uh, before uh, European Union uh, made that uh, uh, EU uh, China strategic outlook. Now that kind of arrangement would not uh, be possible. Davor Genero, great to have you with us, political analyst uh, there for us. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans from me and the whole team in Istanbul. Bye-bye for now. See you next time.